Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the fourth LAMP tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing installing LAMP. So the first thing you want to do is open a terminal. If you're wondering how I did that, just press Control alt and t or you can actually do the long way, go into the dashboard and type in the word term or terminal. And you're going to want to do a sudo, or switch user do, apt git install tassel. Now, if you're new to Linux, this probably looks like a lot of gibberish. Let's explain it super quick. sudo, or switch user do, apt-get, aptitude, get, um, that's a package installer basically. We're telling it to install the package called tassel. And we're going to hit enter, give it the password for your root account, which you gave it when you set up. Now all this stuff, don't be afraid, it's just saying this is what we're going to do. And what it's saying is we're going to download these things, install these things, and it's going to take you know, uh, 9,859 KB of disk space. So just hit yes, and it'll download and install everything. Now, with everything installation, um, this may take a few minutes and I may pause the video in a few spots. Um, I'm testing a new recording software called Record My Desktop. It actually seems pretty robust, so I'm kind of liking it so far. Um, Kazam worked really good, but the it just kept crashing on me. I don't know what the deal was. So I would get, you know, halfway through a 30 minute tutorial and then just realize, oh, I haven't been recording the last 20 minutes of it. Kind of a bummer. All right. Anyways, the reason why we're installing TaskCell is um, it makes installing suites of packages. Is that the right term? Suites of packages or collections of packages? Very simple. And LAMP is a collection of packages. It's Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Well, this will give us the option in very few keystrokes to install the whole thing rather than going out to apache.org and MySQL and you know downloading and reading directions and installing. I like simple, I like fast, I like easy. Alright, so we're going to give this a few minutes to install. Alright, we're back. As you can see here, we are done installing. Now we're going to need to type a command sudo Whoops, test cell. If you want to know what that loud thump was, I hit the tab key for autocomplete and I forgot my main speakers are still on. Uh, now, why am I showing you all this on a command line? Wouldn't it be easier to do it by a GUI? Yes, it would. But here's the thing if you're installing LAMP on a server, you can't always count on a desktop actually being on the server. Most Linux servers simply just have a command line. After we sudo test cell, wait for it to think real hard. There we go. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of options here. You simply use the up and down arrow keys to move up and down through this list, and you can see there are a lot of options. Really, we're just concerned with one. LAMP server. Highlight LAMP server, hit the space key, then hit tab to go to OK, and just hit it the enter key. This brings up a, a quasi-graphical interface back from the old command line days. And this makes the whole process much, much easier. I mean, what it's doing is it's going out, it's downloading Apache, it's downloading MySQL, it's downloading PHP. It's not really true, it's already bundled together, but it's downloading all the stuff, it's installing it, configuring it, all the work's done for you. What this is saying is it's not mandatory, but highly recommended you change the root password for MySQL. MySQL is the database component of this. It's how data is stored. So if you want to make like an online store and you want to have products and stuff like that, MySQL is where all that information is going to be stored. So you're going to want to set a password for this. I would recommend using a rather complex, hard to think of password, but it's something you're going to have to know and remember. For this, I'm just going to use the word password, my highly top secret complex password for a virtual machine. It's going to say repeat it. And it's going to start installing everything here. I'm going to just let this run, and once it's done, we'll resume recording. All right, it looks like we have just finished installing. So if you've come back and you see this, it looks like everything went fine. Otherwise, you see a big, a big error message on your screen. So, LAMP's installed. Or is it? I'm just kidding. Um, now what we need to do is actually verify everything installed correctly. First thing we're going to do 
is we're going to restart Apache because we just did a lot of configuration on the system. We want to make sure the web server is actually functioning correctly before we test it. So we're going to go sudo etsy initd oops, Apache 2 whoops, restart. Now what that command does, let's examine this, sudo etsy is a directory initd and then Apache 2. Apache 2, that's actually not Apache. That is a script. And that script is specialized for helping you with doing things such as restarting the service. Or I should say the daemon, sorry. So we've just restarted Apache and it'll tell you whether or not anything horribly bad happened and it's just saying could not reliably determine the server's fully quantified domain name. Well we don't have a fully quantified domain name we're just running on localhost 127.0.0.1 or in this case 1.1 and it's just going to give you a status right here okay we know that everything worked pretty good so we're going to open up Firefox or whatever web browser you have and while that's thinking we also need to navigate to the actual directory and see what's going on here like I said, this may run a little bit slower because I am on a virtual machine. And if you're running this all in the same box, you just type in 127.0.0.1. That's your local host. And if you see this screen, ta-da, it works. That's the Apache It Works page. Now, where are your files located? Here's your file system. And remember, slash or root is the root of the file system on a Linux. We want to go to var, V-A-R, or var, some people call it, and www or www. And you'll see index.html. That's the actual file that you are seeing displayed here. Now, you can't just go in there all willy-nilly and try editing it because the permissions are different. This directory is locked down so that your specific account can't go in there and do anything fancy. For example, if we do uh, text for text editor, which is actually gedit, bring this up, and let's just open that document. And we think we're pretty special now because we got this document. And we do a whole lot of work. I mean, hours and hours and hours worth of work on this thing. And, well, we can't save. Why? Because we don't have the permissions to save. So what you need to do is back out of that. And if you try to save, it just won't let you. You can save somewhere else. So we're going to close without saving. And our trusty sudo. We're going to open this up. Now you can save. And when you go back to Firefox and you refresh, you'll see this is my code, what we just typed in. So we know Apache works. Now we need to test you guessed it, PHP. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go back in here, we're going to make a new file, if you don't know what that is, that is the start of a PHP tag and the end, or I should say start of a PHP block and then the end of a block. And we're just going to say PHP info two brackets and a semicolon. And don't worry if you don't know what any of this stuff is. We're just going to save this file and we're going to call this test.php. Notice how the colors changed because now syntax highlighting is happening within gedit. And don't worry, as these tutorials progress, we're going to get a much beefier IDE going on here. Right now we're just testing everything. So we'll do slash test.php. 
and ta-da, there's our beautiful PHP version. All of this that you're seeing on the screen is outputted by that PHP info function that we just typed in. Um, like I said, you don't need to understand what this does just yet. You don't even need to understand any of this. This is simply just to test that PHP is working. Now that we know we've got Apache and PHP working, we need to test, you guessed it, MySQL. But we're going to do that in the next tutorial because it's a little bit more involved. Anyways, this is Brian. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial educational and entertaining.